In this lesson, we'll look at creating stairs by sketch. So to get started, let's create a new Revit project file from the architectural template. If you're using Revit 2014 and your screen looks like mine, simply click on the architectural template link on the left, or you can go to the large R in the upper left, click it, hover over new, and click project. Again, choose the template architectural, and then select OK. Reason we're using this template again is because it already comes with predefined criteria that we'll use for creating this stair. For example, if I look in the project browser in the lower left, I see I have two levels created, level one and level two. Think of it as floor one and floor two. Our stairs that we're going to draw are going to go between those levels. To see that distance, let's double click the east elevation. And what you'll see on the east elevation are the two levels and the distance between those levels. Level one is at zero, level two is at 10 feet. So therefore our stair will go between those two levels. Now, if we recall from a previous exercise, we talked about stair rules, and we talked about riser height maximum numbers. For example, seven inch for a maximum riser height. So given these two levels, we would take 10 feet, divide that by seven inches, and that's the number of risers or steps, if you will, between those two levels. So let's create a stair by sketch. To do that, let's go back to level one under floor plans. So in the project browser in the lower left, double click level one under floor plan. Again, we're doing this because typically you draw your stairs from the lowest level to the next level up. Now to start the stair command and look at stair by sketch, let's go to the stair dropdown. The tool for that is on the circulation panel, almost in the middle of the ribbon. And I'll move my mouse to that. Click the drop down by stair, and I'm going to choose stair by sketch. Now, in the previous example, what we selected was stair by component. This example, though, we're going to create a stair by sketch, and I'm going to point out the differences. So, to start out, a lot of things are similar. First off, in the properties area on the left, you have the property for the type of stair you're creating. In this case, it's the same as what we looked at before 7 inch max riser, 11 inch tread. You also have the base level in the top level, meaning the stair is going to go from level one to level two. Now the base offset and the top offset would mean the stair would go above or below the level if you add a positive or negative number there. In this case, they're zero, zero, so it goes right to those levels. Now back up to the ribbon. For the type of stair I'm going to create, it's going to be a straight run stair. If you hover over that, you see a little pictorial that comes up. In the draw area, we have the line selected, which means I'm actually going to be able to draw lines to define this staircase or boundary or riser. You have all those options, if you will. So anywhere on your screen, just left click your mouse. And after you do that, you'll see a pictorial appear of the staircase and you may need to zoom in. So just roll your mouse up to zoom in. And what you'll actually see now as you drag your mouse across are several things. If you previously looked at the stair by component lesson, it looks sort of similar, if you will. You see the total outline of the straight run staircase. You see a dimension as you drag across, depicting the total distance from the first riser to the current riser. And you also see a riser count, how many were created and how many were remaining. Now, that looks very similar and pretty along the lines of the same thing of what you created for stair by components, but it'll change a little bit. So to create the straight run stair, or to the next step, if you will, by sketch, just drag your mouse all the way out to the right beyond the actual total length of the staircase. You'll notice the dimension stops and the riser count stop. Simply left click your mouse. Now what you'll notice next is something different from the stair by component. In the stair by sketch, you actually have different color lines. These lines are editable, or you can modify those, and you can change the sketch. So for example, if I wanted to, I could simply click on one of these lines and start to drag this, and I'm actually changing the shape of the staircase, meaning in this case, it could fan out. Or I could change this from a straight line to a curved line. Or I could add in detail for maybe the bottom staircase. And we'll look at each one of those as we go in a little more in depth in the subsequent lessons coming forward. I'm just going to drag that back for this example. 
Last step would be to simply complete the staircase, and that would be clicking the green check mark on the ribbon, and it'll complete the staircase. After the staircase is completed, it looks very similar to the stair by component stair. You have the staircase drawn, you have your annotation, your up arrow, and your hidden lines indicating above or below the cut line. But the stair is different when it comes to edit the staircase. If you were to click on the staircase now, it highlights in blue, and then if you click edit sketch, you're back to the sketch mode of editing the sketch of the staircase. Again, we'll look at this more in depth. If this were a staircase by component, you would actually not see that. And I'll show you a quick example of that. So just go ahead and click the green check mark. And I'm gonna step through this relatively quickly and you can refer back to the lesson on stair by component, but just as an example here to show you the difference. If I go to the stair dropdown and choose stair by component, again, ribbon looks sort of similar, except I have the options bar now with a few settings. My properties area looks familiar, level one, level two. And since I'm doing stair by component, you have components to choose from. But again, I'm still choosing run and straight. So starting out, it's gonna be very similar. I'm gonna click a point, and as I start dragging my mouse, I see sort of the same thing. Linear distance, number of risers created, number remaining. Drag beyond that distance, left click your mouse, the stair is created. But see the difference now? You do not see the editable boundary lines or riser lines. This is a solid or one component, if you will. Now, you can get around that, though, and you can switch or modify that. Simply click on the green check mark. That saves both staircases, and you can see the one above is the stair by sketch. The one below is the stair by component. To show the differences, though, if you edit those again, clicking the stair by sketch, clicking edit sketch, you're into the edit mode of the sketch of the staircase. I'll just X out of that to close it. If I click on the stair by component, you see you have edit stairs, not edit sketch, because technically you're not drawing the stairs by a sketch, you're drawing it by a component. Now you can use the tool in the upper right, convert. And what this will do if you are in the edit mode, of a stair by component and you select convert, it will convert your stair by component to a stair by sketch. So now you have the edit by sketch tool and you're now in a stair by sketch mode, meaning you can edit that. Go ahead and click the red X to cancel out of that and the red X again to cancel out of the modify stair. Say, no, we don't really want to keep anything here. Up next, though, we'll look at more in-depth ways of creating stair by components, starting out by creating a straight run stair.